Now, uh, today's uh, webinar is going to be talking about the three keys to the holiday success. Uh, the main goal of the webinar is going to be going through uh, the three different things that we feel at Retention Science uh, is most important in terms of preparing for the holidays. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, planning for the holidays, different ideas, different strategies. Uh, we talk through uh, some anecdotal evidence about how uh, or what some of our other clients have done in the past. Uh, the second part of this is going to be going through some of the different strategies and ideas or campaigns that we've seen work really well for uh, a handful of our clients in the previous years. And then lastly, we'll close up the webinar uh, talking through a little bit about post-holiday season. What are the do's and don'ts? What are the common uh, mistakes that we see clients make? What should we be doing with the newly acquired customers that have come through during the holiday season? So those are going to be the three main topics uh, for today. Now, a uh, quick introduction before we dive into the actual topics. Um, before that, uh, Bruna and myself will turn on our cameras just to show that we are real human beings and not uh, robots speaking to you guys today. So um, I'll go first in the introductions. My name is Wei. I lead our client success managers team here at Retention Science. I've been re uh, with Retention Science for about two and a half years now, started off as a CSM and have had a opportunity to work with a large handful of our clients here at Retention Science. And I'm really, really excited to be doing this webinar with, uh, with everyone here. Uh, and Bruno. Thank you, Wei. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Bruna. I am part of the client success team here at Risa. I've been here over a year. And yeah, I'm very excited to talk to everyone today. Awesome. Yeah, Bruno, thank you so much for taking the time. And yeah, likewise, really excited to be speaking to you about the holiday season. Before we dive into our first topic, just a really quick intro about retention science and who we, uh, who we are and what we do. Uh, retention science's uh, goal is to make artificial intelligence accessible and useful for all of our brands that are using our platform. Our AI-powered marketing automation platform does help uh, you deliver an emotive message to your customers at the right time every single time. Um, and yeah, that's a little bit about retention science. If you wanted to learn more about uh, retention science and our platform, please visit us at retentionscience.com or uh, please uh, kind of ask any questions that you have at the end. And I'd be more than happy to introduce you to any other members of the retention science team uh, if you would like. All right. Now, let's dive into the first topic here of planning. Uh, the, the, the main goal of planning here is to stay ahead of our competition. Now, um, internally, Bruna, I know this is something that we've discussed quite a bit, uh, you know, something that I'm constantly pushing uh, the CSMs uh, to push our clients more is to start planning early. Uh, obviously, there, have, uh, there, there are a lot of different benefits and reasons for planning early, but for you as a CSM, Bruna, when you're kind of working with your clients, what, why do you think planning early is so important and what are some of the main benefits that you see from uh, starting your planning a little bit earlier than usual? Yeah, you know, I feel it's never too early to start planning for the holiday season. Um, we've, we've even seen some of our clients start planning as early as September. Um, we all know that once the holiday season starts to ramp up, everyone in the company gets really busy. So by starting early, we allow the teams to get ahead of that rush and not feel like they're being rushed into making any last minute changes or decisions. Also, it's been known that most of the time, our first attempt at putting together a marketing calendar may leave ourselves with either some mistakes or missed items that we didn't originally think about. So by starting early, it'll allow the team to have ample time to go back to the drawing board if needed and make any revisions to ensure that our strategies align with each other. Yeah, and I, I kind of agree with everything that you said there. Uh, wanted to build off a little bit off of the last point where it's uh, kind of giving yourself ample time to go back for revisions. I think one of the other points worth mentioning on this is by starting early, it kind of gives us an ability to plan for safety nets, right? Uh, giving us ample time to go back for revisions, but at the same time, let's say you do plan out for certain campaigns and what if those campaigns don't hit the revenue goals or the numbers that you're kind of looking for by planning early you're able to also plan for safety nets or backup campaigns uh, to try to reach those goals that you're really looking for uh, i remember last year when i was working with one of my clients uh, for the halloween season uh, uh, in this scenario 
they not only planned like a two or three part campaign for the Halloween season, but they also planned a uh, safety campaign. So backup campaigns, if the two or three campaigns didn't hit the revenue goals that they were hoping for, they had some backup campaigns ready to go uh, to fire out instantly. So by planning a little bit earlier, I think it gave them a kind of a leg up in terms of having backups ready um, in case that things don't go exactly as uh, kind of as you originally planned. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think another thing that we've run into issues with with some of the brands that we've worked with in the past is, you know, preparing for holiday season isn't only a marketing department task and could potentially affect internal or even external teams as well. Wei, I know you've experienced some setbacks with this before. Yeah, no, you're 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 absolutely right. Um, I remember in the past uh, kind of going through a few holiday seasons now. One of the biggest, uh, more one of the most common mistakes is me as a marketer. If I if I put myself in the shoes uh, of a brand's uh, marketing team, as a marketer, I'm very well aware of what my schedule looks like. I know exactly how I can operate. I know what I can and can't do, and what I can and can't finish in certain periods of times. But when it comes to the holiday season, specifically Black Friday, Cyber Monday, going into Christmas as well. A lot of these different campaigns and strategies that I've seen being deployed from our uh, from our clients, they're a lot more robust, right? Uh, what I mean by that is it's it's no longer just one email going out or a couple of emails going out. Sometimes there are landing pages. Maybe we're doing giveaways. Uh, there's a lot of tech, uh, potentially a lot of different technical uh, work that's needed, or a lot of additional design work that's needed. Uh, one thing that I, I've seen happen is marketers who who plan a little too late don't bake in uh, the potential amount of time that it could take uh, say your development team to build out a new landing page or to build out a brand new pop-up form or if you needed a bunch of new creatives uh, maybe we're not we're not giving our design team enough time so by planning a little bit earlier what i've seen work really well is it it builds in a kind of a, a additional uh, it kind of builds in a additional layer of uh of time for all of these different departments to work on these things or all of these deliverables for these uh, more robust uh, holiday campaigns. So I do think that yes, uh, internally we can plan for our own times, but it's hard to predict how other teams are going to be able to to deliver on the the things that we need in order to have a successful campaign. Yeah, and you know what I've seen for smaller brands, um, it might mean the need to outsource design or dev work. And if this were the case, to your point, way it's hard to predict how much time a third-party vendor might take. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Third-party vendors is something fairly common, like you said, especially for some of our smaller uh, companies. Um, I know that the while it might not be your fault uh, from a marketing perspective, it might not be your fault uh, for not having the designs or the emails ready, at the end of the day, we just want to make sure that these campaigns are successful. So even if another third party, uh, another third party company uh, isn't able to deliver on the uh, on the items needed, this is going to affect your own marketing campaigns or your own holiday season campaigns. So it's always good to kind of uh, to, to give yourself a little bit more time to ensure that you are getting everything you need and you are prepared for these uh, for these different campaigns. Now I want to shift the gear a little bit. Uh, to talk more about uh, looking at previous data and looking at previous insights uh, for the holiday season uh, and seeing how that can potentially help you out as well. So Bruna, for you, what are some of the takeaways uh, that your clients are seeing from previous year's campaigns that might be able to help them uh, plan better for this year's campaigns? Yeah, I would say the most consistent thing I've seen from our clients is that old saying of don't fix what isn't broken. So if something worked well for you last year, there's a good chance that it's most likely going to work for you this year again, unless, of course, your brand has gone through some drastic changes or something. But um, another thing here is to take the time to actually analyze what works well for your team. So we know that during the holiday season, there are lots of different promotions running, such as gift with purchase, discounting, bundling, etc. So take the time to analyze all of that data that you've gathered from the previous year to make a decision on what you want to bring back and what you could potentially ignore this year. Uh, for example, way I had a client that tested out bundling versus gift with purchase and the actual cost of the bundle versus the gift with purchase was identical. However, what we realized was that the gift with purchase purchase actually worked much better than trying to sell larger bundles at a discounted price. So, Fine tuning what works for your brand is really the key here. Yeah, for sure. And I think what you kind of said at the end, fine tuning what works for your brand is is what's key here, right? Um, 
this example that you gave of bundling versus with, uh, gift with purchase, that might have worked for one brand of yours, but it might have flopped for a different brand of yours, right? So being able to see what you have done in previous seasons, uh, what are the campaigns that have worked, what type of discounting works best for you, uh, let's let's kind of take the learnings that we've had from last year and bake that into this year's planning. There, there's no need for us to really start from scratch. We have previous years uh, of data. So let's take what we did last year and kind of bake that into this year, and hopefully that will make the planning a little bit easier as well as make our campaigns a little bit more successful here. Now, um, another thing that I, I know we kind of have to talk about, especially with uh, where we're at uh, in our um, kind of, where everybody is at with the current uh, situation of the world being the pandemic, something that we can't ignore is that this pandemic is most likely going to affect how customers and brands are going to market and purchase uh, during the holiday season. So I think for you, Bruna, um, what, are, what are some of the main things that you would say uh, when talking to your clients about a pandemic and the planning of the holiday season, what are some of the things that you're talking to your clients about here? You know, actually I had a chance to speak with one of my clients on this and they had some good insights. Um, it's certainly no secret that this year will definitely be challenging for all brands and even consumers. And I think more than ever, we need to focus on the messaging of our campaigns. Um, your customers' purchasing and gifting behaviors are probably not going to be the same compared to last year. So for brands and marketers trying to focus solely on selling products might not be as effective as you've seen in previous years. Um, one of my clients said to me earlier that we need to focus more on the spirit of the season. And, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Um, this year, more than ever, it's about spending time with loved ones and giving gifts with other person's well-being in mind gifts around spending time with the family and being indoors. So the focus now is on how the gifts we are giving and even receiving is going to affect our new daily norm and our well-being. Yeah, for sure. I, I do think that this pandemic is going to affect how all of us as consumers and as brands, how we're going to approach this holiday season a little bit differently, right? Um, Bruna, for you, I mean, you as a consumer right now, if I speak to you as a consumer, how do you think your your own purchasing behavior or your ideas of how this holiday season, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, how do you think your idea of it has changed due to this pandemic? Yeah, it's completely changed as a consumer. You know, the things I'm buying now are completely different than what I'm buying last year. For example, I'm, I'm probably going to go for that cozy cashmere robe for staying in and watching movies versus, you know, those trendy pair of heels that I would wear on a night out with for dinner and drinks, for example, you know, so that mentality, I think, is shared amongst other consumers as well. Yeah, definitely. And uh, like you mentioned, for me as well, instead of buying uh, instead of buying uh, jeans or T-shirts that I would typically wear outside, now I'm focusing more on uh, expanding my uh, sweatpants collection. So that is, uh, <laughs> for me, that I've changed quite a bit as a consumer as well. I like that. Uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for kind of sharing your own insights as a consumer. Now, uh, we talked a bit about planning here. What are some of the things that we should do and that we shouldn't do uh, and the reasons for wanting to plan a little bit early? Uh, let's shift gears into talking about some of the strategies. I know this is something that a lot of our uh, viewers today really want to see is what are some of the things that are working well for other brands, things that don't work well? Uh, and this is kind of what this main topic here is going to be talking about. Now, oops. Before we actually dive into actual strategies, one of the key things that I do want to point out here is the idea of volume is king. Uh, and this, uh, this is uh, fairly specific to email, right? Uh, with email, we have a very, very large mailing list. And from a brand's perspective, uh, the idea is to try to email as many people as possible because we've spent all this time to acquire these users uh, and we want to email as much as possible. Now, there are pros and cons uh, to that. However, Bruna, during the holiday season, do you want to talk a little bit about why volume is so important for our, uh, for our clients and why it's also uh, important to keep volume at top of mind in terms of sending to the right people, uh, things like that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think for marketers during the holidays, one of the worst things that could happen in email marketing is seeing extremely low open rates, or I think even worse than that is your email's not even making into the customer's inbox. So I think also, especially with COVID this year, we're expecting much less foot traffic in malls. I think everybody knows that. And of course, much more online shopping from the customers. So domain reputation plays a crucial role in making sure you have high engagement with all your email campaigns. 
um, I think one thing that's important here is it's something that we need to start working on now rather than neglecting until a few weeks before your big sends. Um, Wayne knows that here at Reside, the CSMs work hard to ensure that all of our clients have a healthy reputation, not only during the holiday season. Um, so what we do is we keep an eye out for your open rates with every individual inboxer. Uh, we actually have different segments that we use for finding your engaged users or your most engaged users for blasts, such as this one here on the screen. This is one that we use commonly, and it's calling out users that are subscribed, but not only that, it's calling out users that are engaged through all these different criteria. So this user either opened an email recently, or they went to the website recently, or they ordered recently, or even they recently signed up to your newsletters. This is one we use a lot, way, isn't it? Yeah, no, for sure. This is something that we do use quite a bit. Um, a question for you here, something that I get asked a lot whenever I'm trying to implement these types of engaged customers list is, how, how do we know, in, in this screenshot here, we put 180 days. How do we know that's the right time frame that we should be using? Can we maybe expand that, reduce that? What are some of the things that we should look out for when creating or, or using these engaged customer lists? Yeah, that's a great question. And it is definitely one we get asked. Um, Obviously, I think clients want to reach the, the highest number of users possible, but I think when starting this list, it's gonna be very different per client or per brand. So I think by starting at a smaller day, so maybe 90 days and seeing how that works out first, and if your open rates are healthy there, then you can start expanding and just keeping a close, a close look on those open rates. Yeah, definitely. Um, a follow-up question that I'm also constantly getting asked is, well, yes, I understand the idea of why we need an engaged customer list, but what is going to happen to the other dormant customers that you know we're not that are not a part of this customer list? Are you telling me that I'm, I can only reach out to this list of customers? Um, what we typically see is from our engaged customer versus our dormant customer list, it is going to be a fairly even 50-50 split. Uh, we usually have about 50% engaged customers and 50% dormant customers, uh, and a lot of times brands don't want to hear this is that they can't reach out to 50% of their customer base. So here at Retention Science, all of our CSMs understand that this is not reaching out to your dorm customers is not a viable strategy. However, it's also not a viable strategy to reach out to everybody on your mailing list on a daily basis. So we've also come up with different strategies here to reach out to your dormant customers, but in a more thoughtful way and in a way that's not going to necessarily negatively affect your domain reputation. So on the right side here, we have a new segment that is targeting only our dormant customers. Uh, the filter criteria here is obviously we want to find everybody who is subscribed to email. And then the only other main criteria is to exclude whoever is in our engaged segment. The last part here is essentially breaking out your, your remaining dormant list into multiple smaller list groups. Uh, the idea here is what we know about uh, inboxing and domain reputation we don't want to send to too many dormant customers at one time. So by breaking out your dormant customers into smaller groups, it allows us to not only reach out to everybody on your mailing list, but we're doing it again in a thoughtful way where we're not hurting our own reputation. So instead of reaching out to these dormant customers every single day for five days straight, you might only be reaching out to them once every three days. So it's not negatively affecting your volume and the number of people you're reaching, but what it is going to be helping you out is increasing that open rate and hope, uh, hopefully allowing you to land more emails into the inbox versus falling into the spam or worst case scenario, just being outright blocked by some of these different inboxers. So I think the, the, the key takeaway here is that we are not saying to ignore everybody who is dormant on your mailing list because we understand that a lot of blood, sweat and tears went into acquiring these customers. But what I think the main point that we're really trying to get at here is there, there are thoughtful ways to engage with these dormant customers rather than blasting them every single day. I understand that from a mark, email marketing perspective, uh, reaching sending more emails will lead to more revenue that that concept uh, on paper makes sense but the reality is that with different inboxers with ip reputation with domain reputation it doesn't necessarily work like that and by sending too many emails it can actually hurt your own reputation and hurt how your engagement rates are and uh, you know in turn hurt the revenue that you might generate uh, during this holiday season now Moving on from engaged and dormant customers, I know that uh, internally during the holiday season, we do have a toggle that we do turn on if in the chance that you do want to send out a lot of different emails, and we kind of call that internally scorch text. Um, 
Bruno, do you want to talk a little bit about what Scorch Texas and how we can kind of use this uh, during the holiday season? Yeah, so yeah, you're right, Way. It is called, this toggle is called Scorch Text internally. And once enabled, it allows for multiple email sends per day. And I know while typically this isn't always best practice, we do encourage it during the holiday season when consumers are already expecting and anticipating a higher email volume from brands. Yeah, definitely. Um, now, I know with Scorch Text, it, it will allow for different types of emails uh, to go out on the same day, uh, but this doesn't necessarily mean, a question for you is, this doesn't mean that we should keep everything turned on, right? What are what are some of the things that maybe we should leave on and some of the ones that we shouldn't turn on and why, why, why those stages? Yeah, so as much as I believe in Resize AI, it must be said that not all stages are equally important. I think the main goal with this strategy is to only keep the essential stages on and disable all the other stages in attempt to not over email during the holidays. I think um, one of the main reasons why we don't want to have too many stages turned on on top of just over emailing is to ensure that we don't have conflicting messages between what is being offered during a sales versus an evergreen promotion, for example. So because of this, I would suggest disabling any win back campaigns you may have as well as lifecycle emails and potentially your post-purchase series if it isn't as important. And the only stages that I would recommend turning on would be cart and browse abandon as well as your welcome email. Since these are the emails that we typically see great engagement from, we certainly don't wanna discourage that. Yeah, definitely. And uh, one other note that I do want to add in here for, uh, I understand that a lot of the attendees uh, on today's webinar might not be on the Retention Science platform today. Um, so wanted to talk a little bit about, because uh, I know the screenshot here is for Retention Science's platform. But the main takeaway here is during the holiday season, really figure out what is important to your brand in terms of your different series or, uh, or paths that you currently have turned on. Um, figure out what is important, what is considered necessary, and then disable the ones which aren't necessary and really just focus on the ones which are crucial or have highest engagement rates uh, with your brand. Sorry, give me one second. All right, sorry about that. Um, now, with some of these different uh, with some of these different stages or uh, series that we are kind of asking our clients uh, to turn on, um, there there is something to say uh, to say about the the emails that we do uh, that we do keep on in terms of maybe updating some of the content there. Um, so one of the one of the strategies that we've asked all of our clients to deploy is for the stages that we do want to leave on. We don't want to keep with the same content or same designs that we've uh, that we've typically seen in the past. Uh, the reason for that is because we want all of our messaging to be aligned. We want the designs to be aligned. Uh, I'm sure your your design team has spent a lot of time putting together uh, really beautifully crafted emails that are a little more festive, a little more seasonal. So from a user's perspective, it, it feels a little off when I sign up for an email or, or I sign up for my welcome coupon and I get a generic evergreen welcome email, but on the website, everything is very nicely designed. The color scheme is a little bit different. You have actual, uh, you have like say like snowflakes or pumpkins on your website, but your email that's coming through is a little bit dull and boring. Uh, here is an example of what I kind of mean by that. So. One of our clients in the previous years, this is their original welcome email. There's nothing wrong with this. It is on brand. Everything looks uh, very well designed, but it's not very festive or seasonal. Uh, on the right here, this is what they essentially turn their welcome email into for the holiday season, right? Everything is a lot more seasonally, uh, seasonally branded. Uh, if they did have a different welcome coupon, that's something that they would be able to update in here as well. But as you can see here, on the right side, you know that this is a holiday season uh, email versus this is just a generic welcome email. Now, I do understand that this is a lot more work, but going back to what we were saying earlier about planning a little bit earlier, if we get to planning a little earlier, this will give our design teams a little bit more time to go and update some of these automated emails or more harder hitting emails like that welcome email or cart abandon or browse abandon. Uh, gives our design team a little bit more time to create a, a a more beautiful or more seasonal uh, seasonal email for these automated emails. Now, um, 
Bruno, I know one of the strategies that you really love uh, to, to kind of talk about with all of your clients and internally as well is the idea of teaser emails. Uh, do you want to go into a little bit of uh, detail about why you think teaser emails are great? Yes, yes, you're right. I personally love teaser emails as a consumer. You know, they always get me, especially during the holiday. But from a marketing perspective, they're great for a couple of reasons. So teaser emails are good for building hype and interest in your brand and the product you're promoting. You know, we all know that on Black Friday and Cyber Monday, it's nearly impossible for a consumer to read through every single one of their emails. They get so many. Um, so by sending out teaser emails, it'll help them keep your brand top of mind for when Black Friday and Cyber Monday starts and also will help build excitement as they anticipate the big day. Um, this will also hopefully give them a higher chance to open your brand's email when they say in the morning they're receiving hundreds of other emails. Um, Okay, so now let's shift the focus a bit on other channels and their strategies since we've been talking quite a bit about emails. And it makes sense since Resi is an email platform, but we also do get asked quite a bit around other channels as well and how Resi can assist with the channels such as social or paid search. Um, you know, while email marketing is very important, we definitely don't want to neglect the other channels that are important as well. So. We know customers tend to become numb during e the email season of Black Friday and Cyber Monday. I think it's just due to the sheer volume alone. Something we've seen work well for clients in the past to kind of combat this is retargeting through other channels such, such as social or paid, like I mentioned. Um, we can create a segment that looks kind of like this one on the left where we are retargeting users who received an email but didn't open. You know, Maybe that day their inbox was just too full or they were busy in the morning and they just didn't get to your email. So by retargeting these users on Facebook or Google, um, it allows us to reach customers in a different channel and hopefully this time they'll see your promotion and engage with it. The one on the right we like to look, we like to use for building lookalike audience and we can do that for uh, Facebook and Google as well. Yeah, I think these are great ideas. Uh, one thing to quickly add here for all of the retention science clients uh, on today's calls, if you don't have uh, the features enabled already, uh, Retention Science does offer uh, Google and Facebook custom audience sync. What this is going to do is essentially allow you to create whatever segments that you want within Retention Science and automatically sync that into Google and Facebook, which will allow you to do two main things. Uh, one being retargeting, as Bruna mentioned over here with this left-hand segment, and then one for building lookalike audiences as we can kind of uh, showcase here on the right-hand side. So for all the clients out there who do not have this, Definitely work with either your dedicated CSM or our help desk to get this uh, feature turned on because uh, kind of paid search, social media is going to be very, very important during the holiday season. So uh, this feature will help make your lives a little bit easier in terms of building the right audience to target for a lot of these different uh, social media and paid uh, media uh, channels. All right, now I want to close out the segment here uh, with some of the main KPIs that we should, we as marketers should be keeping an eye out on uh, during the holiday season. Uh, there are three main things that we should, as a marketer, uh, be focusing on. First one is going to be email engagement KPIs. Second one is going to be inventory. And third one is going to be revenue here. Now, these three all kind of make sense uh, on paper, uh, but I'll go through in a little bit more detail why these are important for your holiday season campaigns. First one here being the email engagement KPIs. We have the two main uh, KPIs that we should be focusing on are going to be the open rate and the click to open rate. Uh, the open rate, like we've mentioned before, a lot of this is uh, kind of affected by two main factors. First one being your domain reputation and your IP reputation with each individual inboxer. Uh, that's why we were saying earlier that we should be very cognizant of who we should be emailing. Uh, and the second factor here is subject lines. Uh, your subject lines do make a difference. Uh, if you have a very boring subject line, you will most likely see a lower open rate uh, versus having a more engaging subject line. Maybe that means having emojis in your subject lines for your brand that might engage a little bit better. Uh, with Retention Sciences platform, we do allow for A-B testing a lot of different subject lines as well as a subject line predictor. So if you needed some help or needed some help with, uh, with either creating new subject lines or determining which one's a winner, uh, our platform will help you do that already. Second main KPI here is going to be the click to open rate, uh, not the click rate. Uh, the, the main difference between the two is click rate is a ratio of the number of clicks against the total number of emails that are sent versus the click to open rate, which is the number of clicks versus the number of emails that were opened. 
The reason why we're looking for the click to open rate here is because we want to know whether or not our content is doing well. And the only way for us to know whether or not the content is doing well is if a customer saw the actual content, did they click on it? If so, that means that the click to open rate should be higher. And if not, that means the click to open rate should be lower. So that's why we're focusing more on the click to open rate uh, KPI rather than the actual click rate uh, for your email engagement KPIs. The next item on the list here is gonna be keeping an eye out on your inventory, especially for items that are on sale um, and kind of heavily discounted during the holiday season. With so many discounts and promotions happening during Black Friday and Cyber Monday, it's no surprise that a lot of brands are going to have items that go in and out of stock. Um, while this is a good problem to have from a brand's perspective to be out of stock or sell out of specific items, this can actually lead to a very poor user experience uh, for our customers. The reason for that is because our customers are so excited, you know, you, you, you spent so much time and energy and money sending these emails, creating these well-designed uh, content for, uh, for your customers to see. You've sold them on the idea that they need this new pair of jeans for the holiday season. They're ready to make a purchase. They go on the website and see that the inventory is, uh, is out of stock. Now it's not only the customers are a little bit disappointed, but from a brand's perspective, we spent so much time and effort in trying to sell this customer this pair of jeans only for the customer to not actually purchase anything. So uh, keeping a close eye on inventory is going to be very, very important for the holiday season. And then last, uh, lastly, and arguably the most important, uh, most important thing to look out for is going to be uh, revenue. Uh, fun fact for everybody on here, uh, the reason why uh, Black Friday is named Black Friday is actually because, historically speaking, this is the one day of sales that usually puts the, uh, the brand's revenue in the black, which, uh, it, which actually means they're, uh, they're now profitable. So that's what Black Friday is actually all about, is to generate a lot of revenue so that your company is profitable, which is why there are so many different discounts and promotions going on uh, during the Black Friday season. While this is something that we need to keep an eye out for, if we start to plan a little bit early and plan uh, properly, as we mentioned earlier about having backup campaigns, uh, safety net campaigns, things like that, we shouldn't have a issue with revenue uh, and revenue is going to largely be uh, kind of affected by your planning and your scheduling of how these campaigns, uh, how these campaigns are going to be executed. Thanks, Wei. Um, yeah, I think those are all really great KPIs for all brands to keep an eye out during this holiday season. Um, thanks for that. I think um, last thing I would add here is for any Recite clients on this webinar, please reach out to your respective CSMs or our help desk if you need help with any of the different strategies we've discussed here today, or if you even need some help putting together some reporting to be better prepared for keeping an eye out on all these KPIs during the holiday season. Okay, so now I'd like to shift gears yet again um, and discuss what are some of the things that we should be doing post the holiday season. Um, I wanna start this section off by actually discussing a common mistake that we see quite a bit post holiday season. Way, I'm sure you've seen this happen many times in the past when come January, it becomes a complete ghost town when it comes to email marketing. Um, we see that a brand reaches their annual goals, obtains a handful of new customers, and then at that point, they're just on autopilot. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, um, you're, you're exactly right, and I can't agree with you more on this point. Uh, I know that from a marketer's perspective, we, we work so hard during the holiday season and the months leading up to the holiday season that come January, uh, it, it's kind of a weight lifted off of our shoulder where it's like, all right, we just went through Black Friday, Cyber Monday and Christmas, um, and now it's time for a little bit of a break. Um, I've worked with brands in the past, uh, post holiday season, they kind of lose all steam and start to be on autopilot, like you mentioned there. Uh, one thing that I really wanna drive home here is that despite having a successful holiday season, we should not be content with what just happened and what we earned or gained during the holiday season. But instead, we should actually be shifting our mentality and continuing this momentum that we've gained from the holiday season and carry that into uh, 2021 and future holiday seasons to give ourselves kind of a bit of a head start, right? From a consumer's perspective, I am exposing myself to a lot of new brands during the holiday season. Uh, and this is largely due to all the different promotions, all the different deals that are available during the holiday season. However, if me as a customer, you, you kind of give up on all email marketing and all channel marketing come January, I won't feel like I'm being nurtured properly and I won't feel like I'm being a val I'm, I'm, 
I'm a valued customer of the brand, there's a very good chance that I'm going to leave this brand and forget about this brand as quick as I kind of join this brand uh, during the holiday season. From a brand's perspective, I think the, the goal should be now to focus on how can we better nurture these newly acquired customers. One thing that I, uh, I constantly ask our, uh, our CSMs and our clients is to ask ourselves the question of how do I turn these newly acquired customers post uh, during the holiday season into long-term VIP customers for our brand? Uh, with the holiday season being so discount and promotion heavy, uh, Bruno, what are some of the suggestions that you've uh, you've made to your clients uh, if they ask you about how to turn some of these newly acquired customers into VIP customers? Yeah, you know, I think that a common trend amongst e-commerce brands that I see is they shy away from traditional promotions and discounts post holidays. Um, and while I understand we don't really want to heavily discount items right after the holidays, something that I've seen work well for keeping newly acquired customers engaged is running promotions specifically for that group, just to show appreciation and thank them for being part of your brand. Um, you know, I think this can go a really long way in terms of building, building that brand loyalty. Um, we've seen brands run exclusive deals or offers in January or launching early access releases just for these newly acquired customers. Um, so this graph here, I actually really love. Um, it, this is our churn graph that all CSMs are very familiar with. And I think it paints a really good picture of when we should consider a customer as a VIP. So you can see in this graph what the churn rate is for your first, second, third, and beyond purchaser. Um, if we have the data to prove that getting a customer to make a second purchase will actually reduce the chance of them churning by 20%, then I feel it would be worthwhile to offer that additional discount right after the holiday season to get these newly acquired customers to their second purchase and then third, fourth, and beyond. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you here, right? Um, the, the, the purpose of this graph is to just show, hey, I understand that you got these new customers to make that first purchase, but what we see is that just because they make that first purchase, we do see a very, very high chance of drop off after that first purchase. You know, in this scenario, 72% of your first time purchasers never convert uh, again. Uh, so what if we can get them to that second or third or fourth time purchaser, that churn rate now drops significantly down to 60, 50 in this specific scenario. So um, all in all, I, I would kind of just close this uh, section out uh, with saying that I don't actually think it's uh, necessarily a bad idea or anything wrong with running additional promotions uh, post the holiday season. Uh, and this kind of brings me into my next or last topic here of the day, uh, which is how should we be shifting priorities immediately come January? So even though Black Friday and Cyber Monday and Christmas are now over, we need to now start thinking about the next holiday season uh, for us. It's no, it's not really, uh, it, there's no real break between uh, uh, Christmas and the next holiday season. What we've seen for some of our brands is the promotions actually run uh, or continue to run into January as well with campaigns like New Year's resolution. Um, and uh, they might have a whole week's worth of campaigns for the New Year's resolution. And a lot of times these campaigns are going to be heavily discounted because they want to continue to encourage their customers to purchase from you. Another thing to also remember here is that even if you're not doing a New Year's resolution promotion, uh, Valentine's Day is only six weeks away. So it's really not that much time. During this six weeks, if we're not running any large promotions, uh, we should be also taking the time to focus on how are we uh, learning about how we should be communicating with some of the newly acquired customers that we've obtained. Uh, if you've obtained a bunch of customers from say Facebook or through the SMS channel, let's take the time to see whether or not uh, email is going to work for them. And if not, maybe this means that we're gonna be creating some more uh, new segments to retarget them on Facebook or Google or using our new SMS functionality to target them uh, with SMS campaigns or, or something along those lines. The, the main goal here is that we shouldn't take a break come January because we need to carry the momentum from the holiday season going into 2021 to make sure that we're best preparing ourselves and giving ourselves kind of a head start uh, going into the 2021 year uh, and uh, making sure that we're able to maximize our marketing campaigns uh, kind of in general. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Wei. And I think with everything that we've discussed in this last section, I feel that the main point to really drive home here is that after Christmas is over, after Black Friday, Cyber Monday is over, our jobs as marketers is not over. We, we really need to stay laser focused on what's next for the brand. We need to take the time to focus on figuring out 
how and what is the best way to most efficiently communicate with our customers and those newly acquired customers while also planning for our next promotional campaigns that are coming up. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I think we've discussed quite a few different topics here today, Bruna, uh, from how we plan for the holiday season, some different ideas and different strategies uh, to implement during the holiday season, as well as what we should be doing post-holiday season. Uh, I really hope that this information was helpful for uh, everybody here or all of our attendees of this webinar today. Um, but before we jump into any questions uh, from our uh, from our clients here, uh, Bruna, do you have any other closing thoughts or things that you want to mention uh, before we wrap things up? No, I think we've covered everything. And like you said, I really hope this has been helpful for all the viewers today. You know, we're so lucky to be in a situation where we get a chance to see so many different brands, uh, marketings and strategies and ideas. And I feel that we've done a really good job aggregating all of that into this webinar today. Awesome. Yeah, likewise. I hope this was useful for everybody. Uh, and um, yeah, we'll hop into the questions from our viewers now. Looks like we do have a couple of questions here. Um, first one here is, can I keep Scorch text running even after the holidays? Um, that's actually a very good question. We do have a couple of clients that are, uh, are using this, but Bruno, do you want to take this question? Yeah, I think that depends on your brand and the cadence in which you blast. If you're somebody that blasts every day or every almost every day, then it might be a good idea to keep Scorch text on. Um, you definitely want users to receive card abandoned emails as well as your promotions that you're or newsletters that you're sending every day. Um, and for some other brands, it might not be a great idea just because they don't blast so heavily. No, I, I agree with that. And I uh, one other point to kind of add here is that I think um, one of the keys to determining whether or not Scorch Text should be left on, because the idea of Scorch Text is to send more and more emails, right? Uh, one thing to really keep in mind is, is your reputation okay? Is your open rate doing well? If you have very, very low open rates, I would probably suggest uh, or fight against turning Scorch Text on because over emailing generally also leads to uh, poor, uh, lower open rates as well. So yeah, um, that's good. All right, uh, the next question here is, uh, somebody here asked, why is the ready to buy stage not as important uh, during the holidays? So I think I can, I, I can, I can feel that question. The, the idea of the ready to buy stage is actually around trying to get these VIP customers to make that second purchase, right? Uh, or make that third purchase. Uh, the goal is to re-engage these VIP customers and get them to that next purchase. However, if we compare that to actual uh, holiday season campaigns, majority of the time, uh, these holiday season campaigns, the goal of it is to drive conversions, is to drive uh, sales. So you have a automated stage, which is focused on trying to get VIP customers to purchase. And then at the same time, you also have these campaigns, which are targeting VIP customers or engaged customers and trying to get them to purchase as well. And more than likely, unless your design team and your marketing team spends a lot of time updating a lot of this uh, content within the ready to buy uh, at risk or even churn stage, um, you're going to have two conflicting, uh, you're, you're going to have two conflicting messages, one that is going to be more branded for uh, the holiday season and one that is going to seem a little bit more evergreen. So that's kind of the reason why I personally feel ready to buy should be something that we disable uh, during uh, during the holiday season uh, versus something like a card abandon or a browse abandon or a welcome email. Uh, Bruna, I don't know if you have anything else you want to add to that. Yeah, no, I completely agree with everything you're saying. And I'm seeing here my my client Chuck is asking if we're going to send this desk deck out. Yeah, hi Chuck. Yes, I'll definitely send this deck out to you. No worries. <laughs> um, okay. We have another question here. This is a pretty long question. Uh, should we send emails daily during Black Friday and Cyber Monday? Uh, and then there's uh, follow-up questions to that, which is how many different types of promotions should a brand consider during this time? And is there a different plan uh, for December post the Black Friday and Cyber Monday? So I think let's, uh, let's start with the first section here. Uh, Bruna, what are your thoughts on sending daily emails during kind of like the week of Black Friday and Cyber Monday? I think it's expected and as long as your open rates are healthy, like we mentioned, it's completely fine. Um, I think slowing down pre-holiday or pre-Christmas, the Christmas season is important as well and then ramping back up. Um, what do you think, Wei? No, I, I, I agree with that. Um, 
I think, set, like you mentioned, sending every single day is is a fairly common uh, and expected thing from both from a brand's perspective, from a inboxer's perspective. And when I say inboxer, it's like Gmail, Microsoft, Yahoo. They're expecting daily emails. Uh, and then from a consumer perspective, I'm expecting the moment I wake up on Friday at 9 a.m., I'm probably going to have two to 300 emails exactly at 9 a.m. So I think it is expected that uh, we, we do send uh, daily emails, but that is not to say we need to keep a very close eye on your reputation, your open rates, things like that. That That's very, very important. There is a follow-up question here that is uh, that kind of ties into this, which is how, how early should we be sending out Black Friday, or how early should we be starting Black Friday and Cyber Monday emails? Um, I, can, I can kind of take that on. This, I think, is going to depend largely on the brand itself. Uh, I've seen clients, uh, I've seen a lot of different brand, uh, brands start about one week early. So say Black, uh, Black Friday or Thanksgiving is that Thursday and then Black Friday is that Friday. I've seen clients uh, start their Black Friday promotions uh, the Friday before. They usually start the Friday before with like a teaser email and then uh, Saturday, Sunday, those are like the pre-Black Friday deals. And then starting on Monday, that's going to be like Black Friday or Black Friday week deals. Uh, that's what I usually see is about one week ahead of time. Bruno, I don't know, have you seen anything different? Well, I don't know if you've noticed this, but every year I feel like these promotions are starting earlier and earlier. I don't know if it's like brand competition or what is it, but I feel like every year it just starts earlier. Oh yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And I also feel like other brands start doing other ridiculous things as well. Um, it's not even like sometimes they create their own holidays for their brand specifically to kind of ease uh, their customers into Black Friday as well, right? Uh, I think one of the biggest examples of this is uh, Prime Day. That's going to be happening next week. There's really no reason for Prime Day, but the idea here is we're, we're trying to ease our customers into the holiday season and get them uh, to start thinking about what are some of the things that they should be purchasing. So you are right. We do see a lot of cu uh, customers start to uh, start to um, start these promotions a little bit earlier uh, as usual. And the moment your competitor starts uh, starts these campaigns earlier, you as uh, kind of as the competitor to the people that are starting a little bit earlier, you now feel like you're a little bit left out. Uh, you feel like, hey, you know, my competitor's starting early and mine's starting next week. Maybe I should start a little bit earlier. And it now becomes this thing where uh, one company starts early and then more companies follow along. And then because of that, that now becomes the norm. And then another company will decide to start another week earlier. And sooner or later, what we're going to see is you're going you're gonna to see a whole month in, uh, of November being just promotions and deals for like Thanksgiving month or something along those lines. So there, there's a fine line to it. But yes, I do agree that we do see more and more companies starting earlier uh, with this. Um, all right. Uh, another question here is, does retention science team have other campaign ideas outside of what was shared uh, today? Um, Bruna, I know that we've internally worked a lot. Uh, what do you want to share about this kind of, do we have yeah. other ideas to share with our clients? Yeah, in general, we, we always have ideas and it's something that we work closely with our clients with SESMs in tailoring campaign ideas for their brand and for their client base or customer base. So I think the ideas are going to be different and the strategies are going to be different depending on the brand, but definitely something that we work closely with our clients on. Yeah, definitely. And I know internally we're going to be doing a lot more internal syncs uh, from a CS department as a whole for us to talk through some of the different ideas and strategies that we might have seen come up uh, this year. So those are things that we're going to put down on a piece of paper and this will allow us to share more ideas and more uh, campaign strategies with our clients going into the holiday season, especially since I know that a lot of our brands here are starting to plan for the holiday season now since we're about a month and a half out here. Um, all right, we have one last question here. Uh, how many different types of promotions should a brand consider during Black Friday and Cyber Monday? This is a tough question to answer. Um, I, I can get to think of the brand. Oh, uh, yeah, Bruno, if you have some ideas, do you want to, yeah, do you want to share? Well, no, I was just going to say, I think it totally depends on the brand. 
Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Um, some of the things that I've seen work well in terms of different types of promotions is uh, one thing I really, really liked from previous years is this idea of like seven days of Christmas or the 14 days of Christmas, right? Uh, every single day they have a brand new sale for a brand new, uh, for a new item. Uh, sometimes, you know, they're doing gift with purchase. Maybe it's additional discounting, maybe it's bundling. So I do think that you can test out a lot of different types of campaigns. Uh, and this is also why I say to start a little bit earlier in terms of planning, because you can take the next two months to test out a lot of different types of campaigns campaigns and see what really works out for you and your brand and your customers. Maybe gift with purchase works well with one brand, but it doesn't work in the, uh, with another. So the, the month and a half to two months leading up to uh, the holiday season, I would say we can use this time to test out a lot of different ideas so that when it comes holiday season, we're not really doing much testing. We're going into the holiday season knowing exactly what we're going to be doing because we have data to prove that uh, discounting doesn't work well, but bundling works well for my, uh, for my brand. So it really, I think you're right, Bruno, it really depends on each individual brand, but I would say that take the next month and a half to two months to focus on trying out a lot of different ideas, see what works for you, see what doesn't, and then this way you can carry that into the holiday season, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, so that we're not wasting valuable time during Black Friday and Cyber Monday to figure out what sort of um, campaigns or uh, things that we should be running or what's going to be working best uh, for your for your customers. Way I had a client once do uh, like an advent calendar style promotion. So every day it was a different promotion, and it was a really really good idea, and it did really well. So the the users already knew that that promotion would go away the next day, and the next day would be a different promotion. So something like like that, you're not running the risk of overlapping promotions going on, and you're still creating that excitement. Yes, definitely. I love the idea of an advent calendar. All right. Um, I think that was all of the questions. Thank you everybody for uh, for asking questions here. Um, yeah, these were these were really really great, and it's great to be able to talk through some of the some of the things that you might be having in uh, kind of in your head while you're planning for your own uh, holiday season. We have a few minutes left here, but if we don't have any questions, we can end five minutes early. Um, so. Yeah, again, Bruna, thank you so much for taking the time with me today. I really enjoyed this uh, this webinar uh, about the holiday season. Hopefully this was useful for all of our clients. Um, and yeah, do you have any closing remarks? No, thank you, everyone. This was wonderful. Um, look forward to doing more of these in the future. And yeah, if you guys need the deck sent out, just let us know and we'll be more than happy to share everything. So thank you. Thank you, Wei, for doing this with me. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care.